So now I've listed a few different uh, sequences and the task is to determine whether each sequence converges or diverges. If it converges, we want to state what it uh, converges to. Uh, so in each of these examples, I'm going to use that sequence extension theorem that I just uh, provided in the notes. So in this first example, so we can determine whether this sequence converges or diverges by taking the limit as n approaches infinity of n over n plus 1. Now with this limit, the thing to notice is that I've got the uh, rational expression with the same degree in the numerator and denominator. And so when you have same degree in the numerator and denominator like this, uh, the limit at positive or negative infinity is equal to the ratio of the leading coefficients. So in this case, 1 over 1. So the limit here is 1. Uh, you could also use L'Hopital's rule. It's got the form infinity over infinity. So you could take the derivative of the top and the derivative of the bottom, which would also give you 1 over 1. But um, we're going to see limits of this form a lot. And so it's really best if you can recognize rational expression, same degree top and bottom. I just do ratio of leading coefficients. It'll save you time. So when the limit is a finite number, as it is here, that means that the sequence converges to whatever that value is. So example one here converges to one. That's our answer. Okay, and I'm gonna erase. Well, I won't erase yet. Actually, I think I will. So example two, we wanna determine whether this sequence converges or diverges. So now we should take the limit of these terms, 1 plus 1 over n to the n. And this is a plus right here. Um, so this is a ni another nice limit to be able to just recognize. Um, we did show back in section 5.6, so I'll put a recall here that limits of this form, limit as n approaches infinity of 1 plus k over n to the n is equal to e to the k. We did show this in section 5.6. So 1 plus 1 over n to the n, this is actually the definition of the irrational number e, which is equal to about 2.7, and then a lot of, I mean, infinitely many decimal places after that. But uh, yeah, this is our definition of E. Um, or you can use, like I said, the work that we did in 5.6 to say, okay, well, it has this form, so it's equal to E to the first in this case. Uh, the other way to do this would be that whole deal where you take, let L equal the limit, take natural log of both sides, bring the exponent down, write it as a ratio, and then apply L'Hopital's rule. That's nice. But Let's just leave it at that for the sake of this video. This limit is equal to e to the first, which is a finite number, which means that this sequence right here converges to whatever that value is that the limit converges to. So in this case, converges to e for number two. Okay, example three. So now we're working on this guy. So again, the, thanks to the uh, sequence extension theorem, we can determine whether this sequence converges or diverges by taking this limit of n cubed over 2n minus 4. This has the form infinity over infinity, but it does not have same degree top and bottom. It has a higher degree in the numerator, which might tell you something, but if you just think of it as, okay, infinity over infinity, the degrees don't match. Let me apply L'Hopital's rule just to be sure. So limit as n approaches infinity of derivative of the top is 3n squared, derivative of the bottom is just 2. And so as n approaches infinity, this is just 3 halves times infinity. It's just increasing without bound. This is going to infinity. So remember, when a limit is equal to infinity, we're saying really that the limit doesn't exist. It's not approaching some finite number. It's just increasing without bound. So this limit diverges, which means this sequence right here, number three, diverges. The limit of the terms does not approach some finite number. Okay, last example, number four here, and I'm going to approach it exactly the same way. So this is how you determine whether a, a sequence converges or diverges for the most part. It's just take the limit of the terms. If the limit exists, it converges to that number. If the limit does not exist, then uh, the sequence diverges. 
So in this case, cosine is a continuous function. So we're allowed to just move the limit inside here, take the limit as n approaches infinity of two over n. So that's two over infinity. So that's, it's, it's a finite number over infinity. That's going to approach zero. So this right here approaches zero. And this is equal to cosine of zero, which is one. So this sequence right here, example four, converges to one.